This is such a diverse job that you put your own life on the line. Kalen's been here for years and he's never, ever done an interview for Bondi Rescue. That's until now. I don't do many interviews and I'm not seen on Bondi Rescue very much because I'm quite boring. He's a knowledgeable guy and uh, he's, he's an asset to the service. 4 p.m. and the tide is outgoing. Kayla is called to the middle of the south end after Mouse spots a man in trouble. Oh, yeah, I've got him. Before paddling out, Kaylin must first clear the shallow sandbank. Unbelievable. Sandbanks are notoriously uneven, with hidden holes impossible to see. I looked at the patient and put my right foot in the trough and then landed a bit awkward, half went. I went down and then it all went left. This swimmer, he needs assistance straight away. And as soon as I see Kalen go down, I'm, I'm just thinking, who's going to save this bloke? Fortunately, a nearby surfer hears the man's screams. He sort of come and collected him, which was really lucky because that, that was his last chance there. Mate, I don't know how that guy just survived. The man is now safe. But despite Kalen's injuries, he continues to assist. He just got washed in. He was fine. And then hopped up the beach. And Troy, from the rhino, was wondering what was going on. It's clear that Kalen is now in need of assistance himself. I think KC might have done his leg. Yeah, I've seen him hit the deck on the way in. If he's busted, just bring him up. But before Kalen gets treatment for himself... Cuts up here on the edge of the dry sand. There's a new patient with a strangely similar injury. Here we are. Here. You're both injured now. We just done his leg. It's quite funny going down to a guy who's been injured, but, you know, he's just done his ankle. Yeah, hey, I'll drop my car. <laughs> <laughs> yes. You're on the TV, by the way. Just jump right up. Five can go up. Two patients, one's a lifeguard and one's a member of the public. Should I get on with him? Yeah, jump on as well. Okay. Let's all go. They both had one good leg each, so, you know, when they're walking up the stairs, I think they could help each other out. <laughs> Kalen is one of those old-school tough blokes and um, takes a lot to stop him. Yeah, a little bit. OK, we'll up there. I'll get you some ice. I don't like to not finish a job. End of the day, it was only a car for... It's not like I was bleeding from an artery or anything, so it's very minor. Finally, Kalen can treat himself. I taught the calf muscle. Three, four weeks recovery um, before I'm back sprinting across sandbanks again. After two hours, the search for a body reportedly seen near North Bondi headland is called off. Jeff, do you want to come in? When beaching the jet ski, Lifeguards must turn off the engine while simultaneously running the ski up the sand. It's a multitasking job that can easily go wrong. Oh! <laughs> you alright? When I first hear, I instantly felt like a shooting pain. I had a good laugh at him and I felt terrible and then he's just going, oh! Not good. And I knew he popped his shoulder straight away. Take a deep breath. For the second time this morning, a young lifeguard has got himself into strife. Oh my, someone come down and give me a hand. Jeff's popped his shoulder coming off the ski. Serious ligament or tendon damage could spell the end of his season. Pain out of 10 was 10 for sure. Once you look down and you see that your like, shoulder's sticking out here and it's all mangled, it definitely gets worse. Paramedics have been called. Until then, lifeguards manage Jethro's pain. This extended care paramedic will attempt to relocate Jethro's shoulder on the first aid bed. Have you ever dislocated your shoulder before? No. No, first time. And another important caregiver shows up. Jethro's girlfriend, Kaya. Okay. If it is just an anterior dislocation and everything's all right, we'll just see if we can relocate it. 
Lifeguards deal with dislocations every week, but they are less used to seeing one of their own in pain. Uh, uh, Can you try and roll his right shoulder back for me? He was still in a lot of pain, like excruciating pain. So, yeah, it was a tough one. <laughs> Despite the paramedics' best attempts, Jethro's shoulder can't be relocated here. Jethro is about to learn if injuries caused by his dislocated shoulder will spell the end of his season. I feel like I go back in and I'm back to work pretty soon. Yeah, it had been out of its place for two hours. It's the most uncomfortable thing I've ever felt, and all I wanted in the world was that shoulder to be back in its socket. Every time you surf it, you know, you get a bit of a feeling in your gut, but, you know, I'm more like, you know, I'm more excited to get out there and get a barrel in front of everyone. It's a pretty good feeling, and especially when you've got hundreds of people watching on the rocks screaming when you get a good one, so it's a good adrenaline rush. But things can go wrong in the blink of an eye. <laughs> After hitting the reef, Jesse is smashed against the cliffs. Popped up and there was a wave, like, right there, so it didn't really hurt. And then I got into the channel, it was just like pinching it. Just, it hurts that much. Back in safe waters, Jesse knows something is seriously wrong. Because it's maybe low tide and that now, it just like bent me around the rock like I was a banana. It just squashed me around the rock. Trainee Jesse came unstuck on one of Australia's most dangerous waves. Now I've, I've fallen off like that a thousand times out there, you know. It's painful, whatever it is. Hey, Spence, can you help us get the skiing? Jesse plays down his injury, but heads straight for emergency. I'm getting, I just keep getting like worse back spasms. I know, just like a sharp pain every now and again. It's, How bad's your pain out of 10 at the moment? Like most probably six, but then when I get more sharp pains, you know, so most probably eight out of 10. Jesse's not only worried about his back. You know, what I was doing, you know, there's a high risk of getting hurt. And you know, I think that it's been a bit short on lifeguards at the moment too, so. A CT scan will reveal how serious his injury is. You have um, fractured your, your vertebral bodies in two places, adjacent places. Um, these are called your spinous processes here. Fortunately, where those fractures are, it doesn't destabilise your back at all. Yeah. How long do you think before I could actually like, but do lifeguarding? At least six to eight weeks. Lifeguarding is Jesse's chance at a new start in life. A broken back presents a major problem. Hey, Jesse. Hey, Hope, how are you, mate? Good, how are you? Um, I've just got out. The doctor said, yeah, I'm a very lucky boy that I've, you know, I've only done what I've done, so I won't have to have surgery or anything. Yeah. And, um, oh, that's good, isn't it? Yeah, yeah, no, I'm stoked. But um, he said I can do light duties, you know, pretty much straight away. Well, I need someone to go get my coffee every morning. Ah, oh, sweet. <laughs> No, well, that's good news, and uh, yeah, we'll work something out down here, and you can hang around down here. Oh, cheers, Hoppo, mate. Yeah, that means a lot to me, mate. Right, Jesse. See you, mate. See you, mate. Bye bye. See ya. Can't wait to get back down and work. It's so funny. Everyone's having the time of their lives. They're having a ball out there. All of a sudden, someone comes run up to the buggy. <laughs> Unfortunately, one of the Bristolers has rammed their rescue board straight into Yates' ribs. And we were all having a bit of a laugh at Yates' expense, as mates do, but by the time we started to sort of assess him, I realised that it was pretty bad. Yates, you want the whistle through? Oh, I don't know, mate. Oh. Is it one of them? What? Oh, dear. Oh. 
That was one of ours. Go on. Oh, go on. Oh. Yeah, I've seen Yatesy put his body through all sorts of torture, and uh, and he can take some pain. You know, I'm starting to get pretty worried. Oh, I'll just pain. <laughs> oh, Corey's killing me, mate. Yeah, I'll keep that. Uh, just keep going, mate. It's spinning me out. <sighs> That's broken. Oh. We're gonna have to get in there, boy. No, it's wait. Yeah, we've got the Roosters NRL team down here doing a recovery training session, and unfortunately, one of the players has accidentally skewed his board straight into Yatesy's ribs. He's in hell of a lot of pain. Oh, I reckon right, he's broken. He'll be pushing on the, on the lines. He'll be pushing on the lines. Get a hat. Yates, he doesn't want an ambulance. Um, I guess he sees himself as a little bit tough for an ambulance, but the pain he's in right now is we don't have any other options. Yes. Oh, I can't sit still. Ambo's here, so I'm just going to go grab one. Hey, mate. How you doing? I'm glad you got you. Oh, man, I'm talking 9-8. I'm not strange pain. Keep on that, mate. I'm really worried for Yatesy. He was, uh, he's a tough guy and he was in, in a lot of pain when he left. Well, I don't even know what happened. I'm calling broken two ribs. What happened? I reckon punch it. Because he couldn't hardly breathe. Yeah, speak to him. Find our life, guys. This is Chris. Oh, what do, Chip? Oh, do you? <laughs> what happened? Uh, I just had an X-ray. And how's this right? I've got a, I've got a punctured lung. Oh, he does have a punctured lung. Oh, oh. he's got a punctured lung. What's that mean? Well, I don't know. The, 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 the ribs are broken, and it, and it goes in. I don't know. It's just this tiny little. It's a tiny little one. And you laugh? Does it hurt to laugh? <laughs> Cough, laugh, sneeze, fart, breathe, mate. I'm, so, I'm kind of glad it's this bad because so now I can justify me carrying on like that, you know. <laughs> if he hadn't gone up there and they said it was just bruising, I wouldn't have let him back in the tower anyway. But uh, so I guess broken ribs and a punctured lung's a good enough reason to be carrying on like that. Kobe was taking on one of surfing's ultimate challenges. Towing into his third wave, Kobe catches an edge. He's sucked over the falls, then slammed head first into the reef. Oh, no. In a split second, his neck is broken. Rescued by the jet ski, he lies motionless, fearing he may never walk again. An air ambulance evacuates him to the spinal unit of Royal North Shore Hospital and two hours of emergency surgery. Miraculously, his spinal cord wasn't severed. I thought I was lining myself up perfectly for, uh, um, you know, for a nice wave and just went straight up, head first over my board. And, um, and it all of a sudden it just sucked me up upside down. And then I just remember hitting the reef really violently in my head. And then I, I knew straight away, I said, I've broken my neck here. And then my tow partner came in and I was just screaming at him. I said, broken my neck, I've broken my neck. And I was thinking about being a quadriplegic more than anything. And so I've just talked him through what to do the whole way, pretty much. So I was, I was pretty lucky to have that spinal training from being a lifeguard, you know. He hasn't faltered one bit, like, the whole time, except for when he talks about, you know, how much support there's been for every, everyone. That's the only time he's, you well, know. I never really th thought I was going to die, but I was... It's pretty scary to think you might even want to walk. But, um, yeah, I guess it just... just makes me appreciate how good people are. I just get pretty emotional when I think about all the support I've had. Just everyone. Just, my family, my girlfriend. Kobe will walk again. Whether he can ever return to lifeguarding is less certain. You know, I'm, I'm slowly getting back in the water and I'm doing some swimming training and building up my strength in the gym, so... Look, I, I think I'm, I'm going really good. Every time you improve a little bit, you just want to do more and more. And I'm not stupid, I'm not going to injure myself in the process, but... I guess you just do whatever your body can do. Like you, if you can do something, you'll do it, you know?